how many more should have been saved. These pictures were watched live in homes across the country. What's missing are ambulances, paramedics, the emergency response. Earlier, when they opened Gate C, police failed to foresee the danger. The ambulance service then failed to react to it. There was no help at 3.02 p.m. The match underway, fans already dying. There was no help at 3.06 p.m. when the play was halted. Two paramedics are even seen walking off in search of a stretcher. The first medical assistance came at 3.12 p.m. In pens three and four, hundreds of desperate supporters, one St. John's Ambulance volunteer. Then at 3.16, finally, a single ambulance. Tony Edwards, the paramedic on board, told the inquest where the incident was, there was nobody there at all other than me. We weren't able to do what we were trained to do. And so fans simply helped each other. He stayed with me all the way through. He was there saying, I'm a nuts for this lad. I want you to pull through. He's really backing me up and everything. Today, the jury found the ambulance service had caused or contributed to the loss of lives. For that, the present boss said he was truly sorry. I would like to extend my deepest sympathy to the bereaved families of the 96 people who lost their lives as a result of the Hillsborough tragedy. We fully accept the jury's conclusions that after the crush began to develop, there were failings made by the ambulance service. Lives could have been saved on the 15th of April 1989 had the emergency response been different. The jury also found fault with Hillsborough itself, the stadium engineers and Sheffield Wednesday Football Club. Not only was there no up-to-date safety certificate, but the turnstiles here didn't direct fans towards the sides of the stand, which were much emptier. Instead, they were funneled through this tunnel into an unfolding disaster. What's worse, it almost happened four times before. The 1981 FA Cup semi-final, 38 fans injured. In 1987, two more incidents. 1988, a crush in those same central pens. A fan even wrote to the sports minister, warning it was packed solid to the point where I couldn't move and where I felt considerable concern for personal safety. The roof is caving in. It had been a torrid decade for British football. 56 fans died in the Bradford Stadium fire. At Heysel, where Liverpool played Juventus, there were 39 dead, 32 of them Italian. English clubs were banned from Europe for five years afterwards. But after Hillsborough, football had to change. I'm sure that the police and all the authorities have learnt from the errors that occurred at Hillsborough regarding the manning of, of these football matches. And altogether, it's a much safer environment, a much better environment to watch football in these days. As I say, sadly, it took the loss of 96 lives for that to happen. Today, the fencing is gone, the stanchions have gone. A Hillsborough should never happen again. The tragedy is that it was allowed to happen at all.